The hard, cold fire of the northerner, frozen into his blood from the fire in his basalt, glares from behind the mica of his eyes, and the salt carrion water brings him wealth. Down there at the end of the melancholy lock, against the lurid sky over the stained water, where hammers clang murderously on the girders, like crucifixes the gantries stand. And in the marble stores, rubber gloves like polyps cluster, celluloid, painted ware, glaring metal patents, parchment lampshades, harsh attempts at viable beauty. In the porch of the chapel before the garish virgin, a shawled factory woman, as if shipwrecked there, lies a bundle of limbs glimpsed in the cave of gloom by us who walk in the street so buoyantly and glib. Over which country of cowled and haunted faces the sun goes down with a banging of orange drums, while the male kind murders each its woman, to whose prayer for oblivion answers no <coughs> Madonna. The sky is a washed out theatre backcloth behind new facades on old baths and gasworks. Downtown, under the green sails of their scaffolding, a dozen buildings' tops steer over the skyline. Belfast is finished and Belfast is under construction. What was mixed grills and whiskies, cultureless, graceless, leisureless, is now concerts and walking tours, friendly, dynamic, various. A tourist pamphlet contains an artist's impression of arcades, mock colonnades, church spires and tapas bars. Are these harsh attempts at viable beauty? There are 27 McDonald's, you tell me, in Northern Ireland, but what are we supposed to do with this information? A match at Windsor Park has fallen in Gay Pride Week. At 2 a.m. the street erupts in noise. I listen as We Are The Billy Boys gets mixed up Four Doors Down with Crazy by Patsy Cline. And gathering in the city's handful of bars, not sunk in darkness or swathed in beige leatherette, men are talking of Walter Benjamin and about grand narratives, which they are always seeking to fracture and interrogate. In my childhood, trees were green and there was plenty to be seen. Come back early or never come. My father made the walls resound. He wore his collar the wrong way round. Come back early or never come. My mother wore a yellow dress. Gently, gently, gentleness. Come back early or never come. When I was five, the black dreams came. Nothing after was quite the same. Come back early or never come. The dark was talking to the dead. The lamp was dark beside my bed. Come back early or never come. When I woke, they did not care. Nobody, nobody was there. Come back early or never come. When my silent terror cried, nobody, nobody replied. Come back early or never come. <coughs> I got up, the chilly sun saw me walk away alone. Come back early or never come. McNeese's mother wore a yellow dress. It was a daffodil and candle flame, a moon for moths that lit the nursery's darkness. And when he called out in the night, one came. And when he cried out in darkness, one was there, or when there was a pain. This call and answer, need being met, some longing stopped with care, became a single thing, as when together two muscles pulled together on the bone to move a limb, or rowers who midstream forgot the separate parts that each one played. That is to say that he was not alone. When in the darkness, in a kind of dream, they talked as one, the unborn and the dead. McNeese's mother wore a yellow dress. It was a daffodil and candle flame, a moon for moths that lit the nursery's darkness. And when he called out in the night, one came. And when he cried out in darkness, one was there, or when there was a pain. This call and answer, need being met, some longing stopped with care, became a single thing, as when together two muscles pulled together on the bone, to move a limb, 
or rowers who midstream forgot the separate parts that each one played. That is to say that he was not alone. When in the darkness, in a kind of dream, they talked as one, the unborn and the dead. And then I'll read somewhat, um, I love most of all Magnesis um, later poems um, uh, from the burning perch because you're just really strange um, and really uncanny and all the um, spooky stuff just comes out. Uh, so um, I'm going to read the text these and then I'll read two poems of mine which are just weird, that's the connection. <laughs> the taxis. In the first taxi he was alone, tra no extras on the clock, he tipped nine pence, but the cabbie, while he thanked him, looked askance as though to suggest someone had bummed a ride. In the second taxi he was alone, tra but the clock showed six pence extra. He tipped according and the cabbie from out his muffler said, make sure you have left nothing behind tra between you. In the third taxi, he was alone, tra but the tip-up seats were down and there was an extra charge of one and sixpence and an odd scent that remind him of a trip, reminded him of a trip to Cannes. As for the fourth taxi, he was alone, tra when he hailed it, but the cabbie looked through him and said, I can't tra well take so many people, not to speak of the dog. In the first flat of a flight of dingy stairs, there was a sunlit room in which dust danced and half a dead bee lay by a sash window, where, we intoned with all, was the other half. Four or five jo boys smoked joints on the brown carpet. In the second flat, the same strained air of decay, damp on the ceiling, cigarette butts in the hearth, but someone had wistfully added a vase filled with flowers and a colourful throw, as though, by an effort of will, the existence of rooms beside this one might be known. In the third flat, something had gone obscenely wrong. The plaster and paintwork were new, but a sharp smell hung near the unpacked goods in a choked alcove. Who, furthermore, was the figure beneath that sheet, moaning in anguish? Who watched from the lampless chair? Prince among misnomers, the floppy disk, lies stranded in drifts of dust in the top desk drawer. A castaway on shingly paper clips, or under an old bank statement, the small withdrawals dwindling to little, then less, then nothing at all. How young it is to be so obsolete. The stainless steel clip shines, the neat black case still sleek as a woman's suit or evening purse. I will take it between my finger and my thumb and post it with a click through the squarish slot of the oh so recent stunningly useless past, the moment before the moment before now, whose code is lost, the words that tapped and flashed like a frantic bird against a window pane, translate back to the gesture of the hand, stalled on the keys like the spirit on the water, like the shouts and groans that issue from the mine after the prop has snapped. The floppy disk is the love note still sealed in its envelope. It's the marker blank above its own strange grave. Thank you very much.